Chapters 1 and 2 uh, introduce us to Sydney in Bloodlines. So of course, we've met her before in previous books, but this is the first time we've really seen her on her own home turf and what it is like uh, to be amongst humans who know about vampires and interact with them. And this was kind of a fun couple of scenes to write here because so much of the other Vampire Academy series, you take all this stuff as totally normal um, because Rose lives within that world. And of course there are vampires and they elect their royal families and they, you know, they do all this, this stuff that we've started to take in stride. And then when you get us back in this human world and they're talking about it, you, you see all this eye rolling and they're just appalled and it's, it's a weird thing to them. And really it is kind of weird when you think about it. Um, we've just gotten used to it. And so it, it was a lot of fun to suddenly take this world that I had worked so much with and say, okay, how would an outsider look at it? And you start to understand why Sydney acts the way she does in uh, the earlier Vampire Academy books. Like when we first meet her and she doesn't even want to stay in the same room with Rose. Uh, not because she's mean or a snob, just because Sydney is so uncomfortable with it because she's had all this drilled into her about how wrong and how strange vampires are. And so, you know, these scenes, they kind of give us uh, an idea of where that might have come from. And uh, what's also really interesting in these scenes is you meet Sydney's father, um, who of course reinforces all these ideas we've already seen about vampires being bad. Uh, but he's also reinforcing a few other things which uh, are having an effect on Sydney as well. And you kind of start to understand maybe why she's so uptight and such a stickler for rules. Uh, and why she feels she has to behave a certain way. Uh, it's because he's kind of taken these, these harsh alchemist rules to the next level. Um, and it, it's almost become personal in a way. And so this was just kind of a great way to set us up to see where Sydney's coming from, uh, remind us what's going on in the vampire world, and then get us ready for the next part of the book. And uh, one of my favorite things that we start to hear about in this book, which is something we never even knew existed before, uh, with good reason, is uh, these re-education centers uh, that, that Sydney is constantly worrying about and being warned about. And what are they? Well, that's something we'll have to, to wait and see if we learn more about. But uh, it's, it's just kind of this dark reminder there that even though we've met Sydney and seen how much she you know, has this disdain for vampires and how wrong she is, that even with all of that training and all of that uh, you know, sticking to the rules, there apparently are alchemists who don't always follow them and those who have gone astray or else there would be no need for these re-education centers uh, that she worries so much about. Uh, and so we'll have to see if uh, those ever come to light again.